Oh look, here we go, he's reviewing yet another Christopher Nolan movie. Yes, you're not wrong, but I'm reviewing a new Christopher Nolan movie. In this particular instance, we're talking about Tenet, a film that, according to the director himself, should be enjoyed in all its big budget splendor on the big screen. Sadly, the state where I live shut down movie theaters and never reopened them. So I was relegated to watching Tenet at home. As always, I'll do my very best to not spoil the movie, but first, a few things to talk about. I'm going to get into the meat and potatoes of Tenet, but first allow me to demonstrate some things that will help you understand what to expect going in. Here's a simple Andrew Jackson $1 coin. Now I'm going to use this coin to demonstrate the two types of physical interactions that happen in the universe of Tenet. First, there's me dropping a regular coin. Second, there's a coin that has been inverted, which causes it to run backwards in time, thus going back up into my hand. While I'm still going forward in time, as I always have, the coin is inverted and will do everything in reverse. You might have thought that I had an audiovisual glitch earlier there, but I didn't. I simply reversed the previous sentence, demonstrating that in the world of Tenet, entire people, conversations, objects, and actions can also be inverted. If all of this is confusing, that's okay. On my first and so far only viewing of the film, I was fairly perplexed myself. Let's talk about how these rules apply in the world of Tenet and discuss, you know, whether or not it's a good movie. Before we get started, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on that red subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you know every time I post a new video. Christopher Nolan isn't simply content with giving you a big, loud, beautiful movie experience. Nolan wants to make sure that after you walk out of the theater, or in this case, you know, get up off your sofa, you are thinking about the universe he made for you. Much like Inception and Interstellar, it deals with big brainy subjects like time travel, time dilation, physics, science, and the fate of the world. Everything in this world revolves around these elements. Heck, the very title of the film is a huge clue regarding the nature of the movie. Tenet is a palindrome, a word that can be spoken the same way backwards and forwards. Everything Nolan does is crafted in a way to make you think about these things, and it's a shame that most people weren't able to experience this movie on the big screen. Regardless of the theater drama, we get a movie that's absolutely worth seeing, even if it sometimes tends to overindulge itself with the details. Clocking in at a rather hefty two hours and 30 minutes, Tenet shoves so much exposition and explanation at the screen that I found it nearly impossible to keep up. Heck, even the actors had trouble understanding the movie's plot. Link in description. I certainly won't speak to anyone else's experience with this movie, but if I understood about 70% of The Prestige and like 90% of Inception on first viewing, I understood probably half of what's happening with Tenet. I'm sure that things will improve the more I watch it, but it's not really a great thing when your audience goes from thinking about the movie to overthinking about the movie. The script itself does a good enough job peppering explanations throughout, but just understand that going into Tenet, you're going to miss some things and that's okay. At least at this point in Christopher Nolan's career, you can't ever accuse the man of dumbing things down or treating the audience like they're stupid. Tenet opens up with a siege at the Kiev Opera that introduces the audience to our nameless protagonist, played by John David Washington. The son of legendary actor Denzel Washington proves himself as a worthy leading man, even if Nolan's script doesn't actually provide him with anything resembling a backstory. Washington's very business-like approach to the character works well, and the relationships he builds along the way made for a much more poignant movie experience than I had anticipated. Tenet explains that terrorists from the future are sending inverted objects back in time, and through a series of roundabout details explained by the movie, this will ultimately lead to a complete annihilation of our planet. The protagonist teams up with Neil, played by Robert Pattinson, and they use every means at their disposal to prevent very bad things from happening. Pattinson continues to prove that he's one of the best actors working today, and Neil quietly has some of the very best moments in the film. Because at this point, it seems like he's just obligated to put Michael Caine in his movies. Michael Caine is in this movie for like three minutes. There is also a big bad guy here who I haven't actually seen in any of the trailers or the marketing materials, so I'm not going to spoil him. He's a recognizable actor, though, and a proper villain. This isn't like Matt Damon's cameo-ish appearance in Interstellar, spoilers. This guy actually has big plans and big motivations and is actually a pretty great bad guy. I know that's not really saying too much, so 
Sorry? From a production standpoint, this is one of the very best worlds that Nolan has crafted, and that's quite the achievement. Bullets flying backwards, scenes shot from multiple angles, and reverse sequences all create a fully immersive experience that demands your full attention. Much hubbub has been made over Nolan's sound mixing, and I had zero issues with it. The score from Ludwig Juransson is loud and thunderous, but I didn't have any problem hearing the dialogue. Processing the dialogue and understanding the subjects that the characters are discussing, a whole different story, but the sound mix was fine, don't be a baby. Tenet is a whole lot of movie to take in. Future tech, quantum physics, spy thrills, family drama, time traveling forward, time traveling backwards, sometimes at the same time in the same sequence, car chases, car crashes, MacGuffins, gunfights, assassinations. If it's been in any sort of action movie before, it's probably also in Tenet. Because our tiny brains have always seen time traveling in one direction, there's a lot to process here. We've seen films that revolve around time before, but in those instances, it's always someone going backwards or forwards and then continuing on in a linear direction. In Tenet, it doesn't work that way, and the audience is required to undo all of that conditioning and think about things differently. It's a brave choice by Nolan, and one that ultimately pays off, even if I know that I'm gonna have to go back and watch it probably three or four more times before it really even clicks in my lizard brain. We've been spoiled for a long time by Nolan creating these incredible, complex ideas and worlds, and it's a shame that we were robbed of a big theatrical release for Tenet. This is a juggernaut of a film, with all of the spectacle and blockbuster jump out of your seat moments you expect. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the review, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also like and share the video since that helps the channel grow. Sound off down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of Tenet, and I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m.